So, you've been lost in the desert for days, and you know that you desperately need something to eat. That burger joint over there is just a mirage. You drag yourself to the weak shade of a straggly tree, and out from under a rock crawls a scorpion. Yum! Wait! You can't believe you're considering it, but how bad could it be? No time to be a picky eater. Scorpions are packed full of protein, just what you need! You'd like to avoid those claws, though. How hard can they pinch? And that stinger! Just how venomous are these things? You're looking at a predatory arachnid here. Yes, arachnid, like a spider. So, there are eight legs to deal with. The least of your worries are the claws or pincers. Scorpions can pinch, but you should be more worried about the poisonous stinger. A sting is way more painful and dangerous than a pinch. There are over 1,500 species of scorpions. But you're in the desert, so you're probably dealing with a common desert scorpion. It's a brownish-yellow color, and it might have brown hairs on it. The scorpion uses those hairs to pick up vibrations from the air and ground to find food. It likes to eat other desert bugs, lizards, and beetles. You see the bulb-shaped end of the tail? This is the gland that holds its venom, and the stingers right on top. Woo! Now, I think your best bet would be to cook it, but you don't have that option right now. Minutes pass, and you're getting more and more hungry. How big is it? It looks to be about 5.5 inches long. Would you even be able to swallow it? Sounds like a choking hazard. But you need those calories and the protein. And there's an endless supply of scorpions in the desert. But you have to catch one first. During the day, you do some detective work and look for holes in the sand around the rock to see if scorpions have burrowed there. Yes, this means there's a scorpion den under the rock. To catch one, though, you're going to have to wait until dark. Why? Well, most scorpions glow under a UV light. Luckily, you have one. Doesn't everyone who's stranded in the desert have a UV light? <laughs> Just bear with me. Next, you need to set a trap. Around the perimeter of the rock or near the holes, dig a hole large enough to set a cup in and pack the sand tight around the opening. Eventually, during the night, the scorpions will leave their den and a few of them should fall into the opening. You wait patiently and keep watch with your UV light. Ah, success! Now you'll have to do some food prep. You grab a thin but sturdy stick to hold the scorpion down. Avoid the stinger at all costs. It's best to remove that stinger and the venom gland. Once you remove it, some whitish liquid might leak out from where the gland was. You raise the wriggling arachnid to your lips, shaking, and you wake up. It was only a dream! You let out a breath of relief. But what if you hadn't been dreaming? The chances of being able to swallow the scorpion whole are pretty slim. Imagine trying to chew a live scorpion that's still kicking those eight legs. Like in the dream, it's best to remove the stinger and the venom gland. If you don't, the scorpion would try to sting you all the way down. A scorpion can't live in a watery environment like your stomach, but it can hold its breath for six days. So if you do swallow it whole, it could potentially float around in your stomach for that long, but probably not. Your stomach acids would do some damage to the scorpion, but you could still have a bad allergic reaction. If the common desert scorpion stings the surface of your skin, you'll develop a rash. So imagine what would happen if you got stung on the inside. Scorpion venom is a neurotoxin, which means that your nervous system will quit working and you'll eventually experience some kind of paralysis. But their venom isn't all bad. Scientists have been doing a lot of research with scorpion venom to see how it could be used for medicine. But if this really was a survival situation, scorpions are a good option. The legs are surprisingly meaty, and like lobster, the best meat is in the tail and pincers. This is how you get all that protein and calories from scorpions. Just chew up the outer shell and swallow. Your stomach acids can break down the scorpion much easier in pieces. Well. Let's go back to that dream for a sec. After you catch your scorpion, you're somehow able to start a fire and decide to cook it. This is much safer, the heat will get rid of any parasites the scorpion might be carrying and will basically make that venom gland useless. Plus, cooking it will make it taste better. And hey, 
The Chinese believe that eating the scorpion whole with the stinger will make you strong. The idea here is to skewer the scorpion. Imagine roasting a marshmallow, turning it on the stick so that it's evenly cooked. Except it's a big bug. Once the scorpion has an even brown color, it's ready to eat. It should have a nice, crunchy texture. You know the whole it tastes like chicken joke? Some say that cooked scorpion tastes like crispy chicken skin. Everybody's favorite part. Bon appetit! Have you ever tried scorpion, cooked or raw? If so, how was it? Tell me about it in the comments. In some countries, scorpion is actually a versatile delicacy. Cooked scorpions are served as street food and make a nice soup. You can even buy frozen scorpions in some countries so that they can be stored and used later. Try putting some oil in a hot pan, then stir-fry your scorpions for one minute. Add some seasonings like garlic, salt, and pepper, or your favorite spice mix. Let them cook for at least 40 minutes. You want to make sure all that bad stuff is cooked out. Now, you have a nice side dish or snack. Want another tasty scorpion recipe? Well, pan-fry them! Ho -ho! Remove the stingers and venom glands. Pour milk into a medium-sized bowl and give the scorpions a nice soak in it. Ooh, a bug milk bath! Set the milk bowl aside and melt butter in a large skillet. Now take the scorpions out of the milk and cover them in cornmeal. Cook the dredged scorpions in your skillet for 2 minutes on each side. Let the excess butter drain off and season them with lemon and salt. Even I might try that. So, if you do get stung, what should you do? Scorpions aren't just found in remote deserts. They're common in hot, dry places like Arizona or parts of Australia. And they can wander into your home. The sting of a scorpion feels a lot like a bee or a wasp sting. Wasp sting. That's hard to say. If you're stung, look for symptoms of an allergic reaction, like a rash or hives. You'll probably have some swelling and itchiness, so put some ice on it. Then use an antihistamine or hydrocortisone cream. A scorpion sting doesn't usually cause a lot of problems for most people, unless you have a serious allergy to the venom. But it also depends on what kind of scorpion you're stung by. For example, if you live in the southwest US, states like Arizona, Texas, and Nevada, watch out for the bark scorpion. They're brown with a darker back and up to 3 inches long. Its sting can cause more worrisome symptoms like fast breathing, a racing heart, muscle twitches, and weakness. If you think you've been stung by a bark scorpion, it's best to just go to the emergency room. Take precautions like wearing shoes outside and wear gloves while working in the yard. Also, shake out any clothes or towels that you've left outside. So remember, his bark is worse than his bite, but not worse than his sting. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. Here are some other videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right, and remember, stay on the bright side of life!